What's going on everybody? Ian here. I am super excited. This is going to be my first time to use my new sheet metal shear and table that I built. Ah, I'm super stoked. So, um, okay, what is the deal? Why are we not going all the way down? Hmm. Yeah, there's at least 10 inches on the side over here that it's not going all the way down. I think I need to adjust uh, this down here, which I hope that I can. So it's always fun doing things for the first time on camera and it's not working out perfectly. <laughs> so, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna have to back it out and cut it by hand to finish it. So if you didn't see in a previous video, I got this massive 52 inch shear for cutting pieces of aluminum for like the skins and the underbelly and the interior and pretty much everything to do with Airstream. So uh, this just made a lot of sense to get. And then I wanted to build a table that I could manipulate and work on the sheet metal with and run it through the machine and all those different things. And so I wanted to build this where there was places that I could cut in between and I could drill and not be going into a table and then I wanted to have the carpet on it to keep it nice and safe. Um, I have a whole video kind of detailing this whole area, my sheet metal fabrication area. Um, I don't know if that's going to be coming out before or after this video. Uh, everything's kind of a little crazy right now with all the projects, but I want to dive into this and show you guys what I got going on. So uh, the first thing I'm going to be working on is the underbelly. And this is a 25 foot roll of 50, 52, H32, uh, 025 wall aluminum, which is what's used on the underbelly. Uh, in previous builds, in the Opus one, I used 040, I think, and that is just, it's way too thick. Uh, you don't need to go that thick. You can, but it's easier to bend this up around the sides and stuff uh, whenever you're doing the thinner aluminum. And it's more than enough for that. So, um, I got this through airpartsinc.com. They have rolls of aluminum. You can check them out. So they got lots of great tools. Um, but I want to start working on this. And so uh, I have it clamped because I don't want to like undo it and it just explode and uh, un unravel the whole way. So I'm going to see if this works out. If not, it'll be funny to watch at the very least. Um, I think I'm going to actually put the roll over here and feed it through that way and have the roll be on that side. So I'm still kind of trying to figure out what's gonna be the best way to manage this. So I think I'm gonna try that. I may eventually build like a, something that I can attach and put the spool on and almost like, you know, just feed it through and have it be very smooth, but, but for right now, so. So I got all of the aluminum cut for the belly pan and now I am working on putting it on there. I've already got a few sections done um, and let me kind of show you what I got going on here because um, the, the frame and the shell are actually both now in the shop and uh, the shell is just hovering above and I have pole jack supporting it. So. This is what we have going on. So it's kind of hanging above it. It's still supported in the ceiling. And then I have just some pull jacks supporting it additionally. Um, you can see I got some of the belly pan already on. So I'm basically starting the belly pan um, a few cross members up right where the tanks end, because um, the tanks are going to be here. And I have that support down there that is going to have another pan on top of it once the tank, or rather, on bottom of it, once the tanks are all in and the plumbing's all done. Um, uh, but I should be able to get all the plumbing knocked out before the subfloor is in. I still need the senders for it for the sea level tank monitoring. Uh, but those can technically go on and then I can put the uh, belly pan on in that section. So um, 
I'm working on this. I'm you know doing it the same way that I did on the other trailer, the the coffee shop, where I'm using the uh, crates to lift it up. I'll get some footage of it, and then we're gonna put insulation in it. Uh, I need to get the brakes wired. Those are the things that you kind of have to do before uh, you put the subfloor on if you're doing it this way. Eventually, it'd be really great to have a rotisserie, and that is the plan, but it'll probably need to be in a bigger space at some point in the future. <laughs> Okay, so I got it in position, and this is holding it up. It's overlapping. Uh, it's where the front piece overlaps the back piece, so no water when you're driving will go up in there. Uh, so now I just need to drill and rivet and just work my way forward. And then I'm actually going to do the overlap, uh, drill them from the front, and then rivet them from beneath. It'll be a little easier that way, I think. And with the pallet there, I can drill just into that, so. So when you have a gravel road leading to your shop, your floor is always filthy because just that, that gravel dust just constantly flies in here. Eventually, I want everything paved. We'll see what happens because it kind of sucks if I can never keep it clean. It's better than the uh, driveway though in the 100 degree weather. <laughs> Can't complain too much. <laughs> Other thing, when you're doing the belly pan, you want to use the large flange. These are 532 rivets. I got these from airpartsinc.com because um, these have that larger flange and that helps hold the belly pan on better, so. So I was editing this video and I realized that I didn't actually shoot an ending for it. Um, and then I was needing to get the shell back on this thing because I have to do another uh, subfloor this weekend and get that knocked out like as quickly as humanly possible. And I was putting in the subfloor and I lost my step. And let me, well, let me show you what I did. And then this happened. So I definitely stepped through the belly pan there. Um, total rookie mistake, but as you can see, I need to pull that piece out. It's just one section, and luckily it was in the rear, so I can pull it out and put a new piece up there. It won't take too terribly long, but... <laughs> It was just like frustrating as I'm putting the subfloor in, I, I lose my step and then, you know, the rest is history. So, um, the rest of it looks really good. I'm going to go around to the front. And as you can see, the shell is on this thing somewhat. I mean, I still need to like rivet and do a bunch of stuff, but it's attached and movable. And that's the key. So, here is the belly pan very bottom section I still have the side wraps but that's just small sections and then the body itself wraps around but it looks pretty good happy with it so that's that it is definitely hot now in Texas I am sweating I need to get one of those big portacool fans or something going on in here because it's just there's no air movement and it's just gross so yeah but um like I said the floors in this one uh, I didn't do like a full video on the floor going in this one but this next one I'm probably going to do kind of like a time-lapse thing, which would be cool. So um, I'll probably show some of the buttoning up, and I'm going to talk about the hoist and how I did it differently. 
in a video. So uh, that's coming. But thank you all so much for watching. And uh, feel free to subscribe, like, and comment. And we will see you next time.